Hello everyone, so today in this session I'm going to talk about marketing taxonomies, um, how to define them, where they're uh, useful, where they come into play within the experience analytics. I'm going to also try to show a demonstration of this. Um, that's obviously going to take some time because when you do anything with uh, within the XDB realm, uh, it's, it's going to take time to aggregate that data into X, uh, from XDB into SQL for reporting purposes. But um, I'm hoping I can show the topics, show where they're used. So uh, to get started, uh, we're going to look at the marketing control panel. And inside here is a taxonomy or taxonomies. What are taxonomies? They're really just a type of classification for a for an item, uh, not not necessarily a cycle item, but a any type of item. So, you know, if you had a book, for example, uh, some taxonomies that would uh, be used for a book would be hardcover versus well, I, actually that would actually be a type of taxonomy, but type of book, and then the types of taxonomy for the type of book would be, or the tags for that taxonomy uh, would be hardcover versus softcover, et cetera, et cetera. And there might be other uh, classifications. There might be, you know, is it fictional? It would, might be a taxonomy. Uh, there might be a taxonomy for, you know, the type of book it is. You know, is it, you know, what types of, uh, like the subject matter of that book, uh, for example, uh, you could have a taxonomy that's a, a tag uh, that you could tag items or tags to a book. So you could say XYZ book, Acme product book, whatever you want to call it, would have these tags associated with it, which would be associated to a taxonomy of keywords or or um, or things like that. So where does that come into play? There's, there's kind of uh, some main uh, taxonomies are defined by Sitecore out of the box. And then there's some what they call facets, which are really just custom taxonomies that you're going to define based off different things. So they have, uh, so if you're building a campaign, you would have custom facets or taxonomies that de describe your campaign specific to your business. So instead of saying, okay, for campaigns, you're only going to have these types of taxonomies, what, what Sitecore allows you to do is you can customize your taxonomies for your own uh, business. So I, I'll show this in a second, but a campaign facet or taxonomy might be something that's specific for campaigns that relates to your business. Um, if you're a global business, you might have some sort of regions. Uh, if you're a local business, you might have, I'm not exactly sure of a good example there, but um, you might have locations, uh, something like that. That's just one. It doesn't have to be regional. It could be any sort of taxonomy you want. And, and you can define one or very or many of these. I think the more you describe your business in different using these taxonomies, the more useful your, your data is going to be. So uh, where this all comes into play is that you're going to classify and build these taxonomies you're going to start assigning them to different campaigns or goals or assets or whatever you might have. And then that data can be used and pulled into experience analytics, which will allow you to filter your reporting based off these, these uh, facets or taxonomies. So uh, just to clarify what some of the built-in ones are, campaign group is a, uh, so if you have campaigns, um, you can put your campaigns in the groupings. Uh, so if you had an online campaign, an offline campaign, maybe a, a social a social campaign, such as a Facebook specific, I mean, you could break these down into very granular types of campaign groups. And then inside those campaign groups, when you go to create a campaign, which I'll show here in a second, um, you're gonna you're gonna be able to specify which campaign groups this goes into. So over time, as you run hundreds of campaigns, either via a newsletter or a social campaign or something like that, you're going to build up and have data for a campaign group as well. So you'd be able to say, okay, my entire social, or let's say you had Twitter and Facebook, you could be able to tell your campaigns how they do overall for Facebook compared to how they do overall for Twitter, um, as an example. 
Uh, an outcome group is a what is the end goal of um, something you're you're building. So uh, these come in as as again uh, in different various forms within the marketing suite, and you can just build this classification of different types of outcomes that you want. So if you are looking for a purchase, you're looking for a lead, um, whatever it may be, identification. If you're just trying to identify or get to a place where you have known users, uh, that's also something you want. And I will say about outcomes, this will actually show up in experience profile as well. So when when you start marking things uh, inside, the, inside the marketing suite with these classifications or these taxonomies, uh, when these are hit with the marketing uh, within the experience profile, these will actually show up on the timeline for that user. So there might be an identification, a uh, little marker on their experience profile. There might be uh, they made a purchase, and then you can sort of sort of start to get an idea of how many purchases they have, how many how many leads they've completed, et cetera. Whatever your business is about, donations, whatever whatever your overall outcome is that you're looking for. Um, venue is uh, something I don't see very much often used, but a venue might be a, like a location like I described it for for the campaigns. Uh, that's that's a quick uh, intro of what that is. That's that's not as um, I'm not going to go too much in detail on that one. Uh, channel, that's a very um, big one. Uh, there's a lot already defined for you before you even you can start going in there and customizing some of these. But like online channels, and then you can start breaking them down to specific groupings within those groupings. So, uh, for example, uh, when you set up a, a campaign, you can specify what the channel is for that uh, specific campaign. That's kind of similar to a campaign group, what I described in my first example about Facebook versus Twitter. Um, you would also have that data if you marked it with a channel of Facebook versus Twitter. Like I said, the more you classify your campaigns, your goals, your uh, various other aspects of the uh, marketing suite, uh, you could get better data back. And then with that data, you can start doing more with the experience, uh, the entire experience uh, engine. And then lastly is the assets. Uh, asset is a classification that you can get or a taxonomy that you can give to uh, things in your media library. Um, so I think this this really at first doesn't seem like it would be that important, but over time you can start to get an idea of how valuable your images are versus your, your videos and things like that um, in your in your media library. So you would create some assets and you might classify them by video versus uh, images versus you know some other type of asset. I mean they don't have to just be video and images. They could be. Uh, PDFs or things like that. Or you could even have downloads and things like that in here. So you could have, you could break it down even further into specific types of assets. Um, you might have, like, this doesn't have to be generic. If you could be more specific here as well, you might have an ABC product that is a download of some sort or a PDF. You could specify it as an asset inside of here and then you could classify it as that. It seems a little it doesn't seem like something you would necessarily want to do because the the asset itself, the this is a taxonomy versus an actual asset, which would be an item in your media library, would be what you are actually. So that would be ABC or XYZ, whatever example I used before, uh, product, and then it would have an asset to that, uh, asset classification or taxonomy. So let's uh, let's just quickly go in and just start uh, adding some of the ones I was specifying before. So for a campaign, I'm just going to go ahead and do, I'm going to do social versus, let's see, um, versus offline. And let's do another one for a website. Or um, actually, let's, let's, Step back. Let's uh, delete social. So I believe you. Well, no. um, I think offline is too broad as well. So I actually think social is not too bad. But let's just do the the original example of Facebook and Twitter. I 
I can't spell Twitter. I really still can't. Twitter. So those are our campaign groups, and we'll. So basically, we're going to have groups for. We're going to create some campaigns. Um, I'm not going to create that very many today. I'm just going to create one, but uh, we could have multiple campaigns for Twitter. Another one might be emails. Uh, another one might be um, postal newsletters. Uh, so uh, you'd ask, well, well, how how does an offline um, how does an offline campaign such as a postal newsletter? How is that information still going to be able to be tracked? Well, you you just would when you create that campaign, you would get that campaign URL and you just use that on your your uh, in person um, the the postal newsletters. Now, keep in mind that there could be some skewed data from that because users might not want to enter that query string information about what campaign it is. Um, so some people might just go right to the website. But in some of these other channels, no one's going to really pay attention to what the actual URL is. They, they don't care if it has query string information on it, et cetera. Um, and this is very similar to uh, how kind of Google AdSense works, uh, how it puts in all that query string information when you click on a link. Um, I'm going to leave all this as is. Uh, the venue, I'm not going to really specify for this channel. I'm going to leave as is. And then for assets, I just want to specify uh, images, videos, and documents, since I'm going to classify PDFs as a document. So let's talk about these campaign facets and create some examples. Uh, I think examples are the best way to teach things because there's there's actually a, um, a tutorial online from Sitecore that's oh, uh, basically an article, and it kind of describes how to create some of this stuff, but it's very vague. It doesn't provide any examples, and it really doesn't describe where this comes in and where you'd want, why you'd want to create some of this information. So. So for campaign facet one, what I want to do is create one called, I didn't click that right, uh, I want to rename it. So what I'm going to rename it to is regions. So I'm going to pretend I'm a, a global company, and this company has regions all over the world. So I might be sending in uh, links to a specific region, for example. Uh, I don't know if these are great examples, but these are... Um, are, are some of the things you could do. You could also go and do industry. You, you really got to think about your business and what you really want to track from your campaigns. So if you have a running campaign, what kind of information will those links kind of come from? And what kind of information do you want to track? So you could have a one email newsletter and it, in it, it could have different campaigns that are used depending on what Let's say you wanted to focus on, let's say you had the same sort of channel, same sort of everything was being used, but the message was different each time. Uh, maybe we'll, sometimes you focus on more of a selling direction versus a uh, more of an informational direction. So you could, you could put in here as a facet directions. Um, and one could be informational versus selling. I, I, that's probably not a great name for that, but... Um, that's just an idea of something that you might create these these uh, taxonomies on. Um, there's a lot of other scenarios that you could do as well. Um, I would say work, working with a marketing professional might help you come up with better ones as well. And you know you could start out you could start out with just one facet or taxonomy built for your your uh, campaigns because that's maybe all you have in mind at, in the beginning is. Oh, I only have you know this scenario in in play. So, but after as as time moves forward and you use more email marketing and and things like that to to promote these campaigns, you might come up with new ones, new facets, new taxonomies to to define these campaigns that you're running. So, industry, for example, would be. Um, and a custom group is just another. Uh, subcategory to this taxonomy. Let's see if I have a good example. I could say IT. 
That's regions I'm doing right now. I meant industry. So IT as an industry. And then inside of here would be software development. Um, and then another uh, taxonomy uh, tag underneath IT might be um, network administration. Um, so you might be, your campaign might be needing industry. You might tag it with an industry when you create that campaign. I'm not sure what scenario we run into that would uh, that would make sense for that, but uh, it's just some ideas. Regions, you could go down to, for the group, you could say uh, North America. And then inside North America would be United States. And then inside the regions again, I will do Europe. Inside, oh, that's the wrong option. And then inside here, I would select Italy. So now you can start when you create your next campaign, which I'll show you here in a, or I'll show you here in a second. Uh, we'll be able to select its region. We'll be able to select its industry, and then when we start getting links from those that campaign, it'll start. You know, the analytics, the experience analytics, will start reporting that we're getting this many links from um, Italy and and network administration and it, you know these other various uh, taxonomies. Uh, you can also do this for goals. So uh, same with industries. One one thing I want to note: you really shouldn't delete these facets. If you're not going to use them, just don't do anything with them. Just uh, keep them as is. But I believe there is a way you can add them back and as a way to, um, it's a little uh, complicated. I'm not sure why Sitecore went this route with this type of field structure because I don't, I'm not a big fan of numbering things like this. I would rather have a place where they can define these at and then it is just brought into site in the, into the campaign selector, for example. But it's, it's like they use the rock type of field or something there. All right, so I'm going to skip the goals and let's just, let's create them. Let's not create any asset facets, um, but I'll show where these come in as well. Um, so that's pretty much concludes defining these taxonomies. And I hope that that's very useful for you right there. Um, let's go into back to the launch pad and go into the campaign creator. And now you'll see all the kind of deep campaigns are created by default. Um, what I, what I want to do is just create a new campaign, which we'll use for demonstration purposes here shortly. And I'm just going to call this um, demonstration campaign. And I'm put the set start date to the first of September, which is in the past. And then I'll put it up to uh, October first. So here, here's all the stuff we kind of were specifying before. So here is regions. Remember, this was the campaign facet one, and industry was campaign facet two. So basically, now it's pulling in this information uh, from the customizations that we made. Also, you'll notice in here is the campaign group. This is the, the groupings that we created for each campaign, which I'll show the values here in a second. And then you also see channel. Uh, you'll also see asset. So if you wanted to use this campaign for promoting a video or something like that, you could uh, then select uh, an asset. Looks like I don't have any defined. Let me let me step back one second. Um, I'm gonna save this change. So it just allows me to basically uh, save the change, and then I'll be able to uh, come back and make changes to this later. See the demonstration campaign. So let's go back to the marketing control panel, taxonomies, and an asset. Maybe you have to, uh, yeah, you have to. So it's just an asset group, and then you can define asset, an act, actual asset type inside of that. So documents could be PDF. 
and videos could be uh, MP4. I'm a little confused by this a little bit why there's asset because uh, when you upload a, a thing into your media library, um, you, you basically have, you know it's type already. So I'm not sure why there's an asset taxonomy here unless it's not necessarily supposed to be on the type but more of another type of asset uh, classification. But all the examples I've seen have been in this in this way. So maybe that's where it comes in later and it makes more sense than, than it seems to be, but that does seem a little confusing. Uh, wrong button. Um, so back to the here, back to the launch pad, and then I'm gonna go into the campaign creator again, and I'm just going to select demonstration campaign and now we should be able to select an asset. So videos, MP4, documents, PDF. And, and to keep in mind, we don't have to select any of these. So if, if this is not an asset uh, campaign that where you're trying to push an asset, don't select anything. Uh, that way it's not gonna like harm your, your data set um, having a campaign that's running and, and collecting values to something that doesn't make sense for that campaign. Um, some of these you probably should select, so like campaign group. Um, if you create campaign groups, then you're probably going to want to select uh, one of these. So emails, I'm going to select. The channel is basically what I described before. Before it's a already defined list of categorizations or taxonomy tags. Um, I don't know if there is an email one in here. Uh, we're here email marketing. So here's an idea of some of the things you can do. Email marketing, email newsletter, email notifications, email send, etc. So I'm just going to do email marketing. At some point, I'm going to do a demonstration on EXM, um, where I think some of this this will come in more into play. Um, and then I'm just going to select a United States because I'm going to market this campaign to the United States. And then I'm just going to market it to network administration, even though that really doesn't make sense for this one. Um, I'm just going to use it as a demonstration for demonstration purposes. And everything you have is, um, so once you save this, um, you, you can now add things that come in via that campaign or at, entered immediately into an engagement plan. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate that for this, this topic, um, but it will probably be something I, I, I cover in the, in the near future. So now we have everything defined. Uh, let's just go through and talk about some of the other ones I, I briefly talked about. There's goals. Uh, so if we go back to the marketing control panel and we go into goals, um, we're just going to select a pre-existing one. So if I click on Google Plus one, uh, you'll see that there is kind of this classification, um, which is basically where you're, you're selecting your taxonomies again. We didn't define any... Uh, facets or taxonomies for the goals, but you can you can for your um, for your goals you can define assets for them as well or asset uh, classifications that make sense for that goal. If if this was a video download of some sort, then you might select MP4 for example, um, but that doesn't really make sense for Google Plus One, so I'm not gonna do anything here. And then lastly is, is assets. And so if we go back to, if we go into the media library um, and we just, this is a default instance, so there's not much in it. But if we just click on cover, for example, you'll see that here again is the ability to select asset facets, um, which is the other classification in there. Um, and you can, you can assign, um, other uh, classifications to that, but also it might be a good idea when you upload new content that you just classify that that content. So the cover is an image. I didn't define it, a uh, asset a tag for that, so I can't select one. But you get the idea that I might select image um, JPEG, for example. Or um, if I had to, uh, taxonomies defined for this, I might want when I create that piece of content, I might want to you know, tag it. So it's classified or it's, we've classified that content or, or clarified what its purpose is. Anyways, uh, this basically concludes this topic. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right. Thank you.